The day is finally here to do the test run and to break in the cam, thank God. I thought I'd give you a tour of the test stand before we wheel it outside and put the header mufflers on it and crank it up. On the switches, I put the, it's got two fans for cooling. I put two uh, switches on there that, because they're high amp draw and I didn't want to run big heavy wire and I think you're supposed to do two switches anyway. And these aren't uh, thermostatically controlled, they're manual. You know, I figure you're standing here anyway, surely you have enough sense to turn on the fans when it gets hot. I thought I was going to use the oil pressure gauge, but where I didn't want to drill a hole in the pan. So where I was going to put the sensor, it wasn't going to be of any use on preheating. It's got oil heater on the pan to uh, heat it up, and, and I, I, it wasn't going to work. So and it's easier just to use the infrared gun, you know, and shoot it that way, and I can do it better that way. So what I'll probably use this for is put an EFI fuel pressure gauge there. This is assuming that I ever get Edelrock to make an EFI. Uh, then you got uh, the fuel. This carburetor calls for five to seven, and we've got six. And then we've got uh, water pump. Oops, I guess I should. Put. So that seems to be working good. It also has a water heater, so we'll uh, preheat the water. We're not going to have to do a stone cold start. And I primed it again, and everything went fine. And then I put in the distributed drive gear, putting on uh, half STP and oil mix all over the gear and where it rides underneath the head of the gear on the bushing and in the bushing again, even though I'd already done it before. So, and then the slot parallel to the crankshaft because that's what the factory service manual calls for. So, and then the starter button, it's like a uh, race car or electrical system. You got a Ford solenoid back here and then one cable going to the starter and then you've got a jumper wire uh, uh, over to the solenoid you know, to kick it off. And then a Mopar mini starter. Uh, all the things, I just told them I wanted it like uh, 70 Hemi Roadrunner, so that's what that is. That's a knockoff uh, aluminum bell housing, and I used an aluminum flywheel just because I'm too old to pick up a steel one. And uh, TTI two and a quarter headers, and the radiator is 70 Roadrunner also, as are the hoses. But then it's an Optima battery, and of course I've never started a test stand. I don't know what it's going to try to do. I don't know if it's going to try to vibrate off or roll away. All four casters locked, so I'll have those locked. And the engine sits on half-inch rubber, uh, the two on front and one on the back, so I'm hoping that kind of minimizes the vibration. And the muffler should hold down the noise a little bit. Um, so, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. And then we have a Mazir water pump. Make it easier. You don't have to have the belts and pulleys. And, of course, this ignition system. I wanted something self-contained. This is a self-contained ignition system. I'm... I've never run it. I don't know if I've got it wired right. I hope I've got the right kind of coil. They said a stock coil won't work. Well, it's a Excel, and they said it needed the ohms to be this, and the ohms are right on the money. Um, I know a single four barrel looks terrible on a Hemi, but we just wanted something simple to break this cam in. I don't have a, a known carburetor in the house that we can put on there and start this thing up. So if I put two of those on that inline Holly manifold, well, then we'd be having to tune carburetors and sink and all of that. It's just too much work. So we'll do it this way. Uh, you might be able to see the uh, electric heaters down there for the water. 
everything ought to be good. I don't know, I didn't point out if that's a Carter electric fuel pump. I think that's most of it. I think we'll get the uh, mufflers rolled outside and put the header mufflers on it. And I, I've got a, I bought an air fuel ratio gauge for the exhaust because I wanted to tune the carburetor with that, but uh, it, I'm so anxious to get this thing started, I can't wait any longer. So I think I'll do this first and then put the air fuel ratio gauge on it and then maybe learn how to tune that carburetor. Okay, as you know, what we're trying to do here is break in the cam. So the ideal way to do this is they want you to crank the motor. They want it to start instantly, bring up the RPMs to 2,000, and hold it there. Now, everybody, there's 20 different people on the Internet tell you how to break in your cam. Some say vary the RPM. Some say don't. Some say 10 minutes. Some say 15 minutes. Some say 20 minutes. You have to figure out what they really read between the lines so they want you to bring the RPMs up to for the splash lubrication to get all over the cam and keep everything lubricated while you're breaking in the cam well so I just want you to know up front we're doing this with a carburetor that we don't know that works an ignition system we don't know if it's worked or wired up a tack that I, I assume I have wired up right. Uh, I just hope everything goes good. <laughs> you know. Oh, by the way, the dipstick turned out great. Uh, got clearance and everything. All I have left to do is to make a little tab here to hold that uh, steady. But it'll be fine for the test run and the break-in. and It's all going to be good. I'll get the uh, water heated up and the oil heated up before we wheel it outside and then we'll hit it. Okay, we're ready to go. We've got the water up to 120, 130 and it's heat soaked. Oh, it's the good. oil's up to around 100. Okay, we want fuel, and I'll do the, uh, and I'll do the uh, water pump, oh, we need ignition, I'll do the water pump, and we'll do the fans as we need them. We ready?
again. So I think it was a great day. Everything went wonderful, I thought. Uh, we had a couple small problems, mainly uh, battery. I knew that the fans drew 20 amps a piece, and the water pump's a pretty good draw, and of course you got your fuel pump and the ignition. But my battery charger has a 50 amp setting, so I thought that was gonna work out okay. Well, that smart charger doesn't understand when there's a draw and so it was throwing an error code so we had to go get another battery charger and it's only a 10 amp so i think we were we were losing battery power of course drastically with 50 amp draw and it and so i don't, I don't think the fans were working properly and so it started to heat up i don't think it was helping that the fan shroud is not sealed good to the front the you have a gap at the top and the bottom and so the fans can suck air around that gap but not not pulling it through the radiator so I think you're losing a little efficiency there. Uh, I'll have to see about putting something to seal that. You see what I'm talking about? The fan shroud not being sealed good here. And same way at the bottom. I, and I've got some foam I could put there, but I don't know if that foam could take that much heat. But you don't want the fans to be able to suck air around here. And that, cause that's not helping you cool. This needs to be sealed up. I just don't know what to put in there yet. So the 10 amp battery charger just couldn't keep up with every with the draw. And when it got warm, we shut it down. But we'd run 10 minutes. And some of the cam manufacturers say to run 10 minutes, then shut down and, and do it again for 10 minutes. Let it you know, cool off, then do it again for 10 minutes. So we did that, and that's all fine. Uh, when we got done, it had uh, 20 pounds of oil pressure idling at 1,000. Um, I'm, I'm totally happy. I mean, everything worked great. We had a tiny little fuel leak and a tiny little water leak, and, but uh, I'd say it was good. Uh, that'll probably be enough for this video. You've probably listened to this thing run long enough. So I think what we'll do is uh, wheel it inside and go ahead and do a compression. Uh, I want to check the valves while it's hot uh, to see if our minus seven on an aluminum head Hemi was the right number. Uh, I think it was supposed to be 20 hot and we set it at 13 cold. So we'll find out if that was right. And I might have to warm it up some more to get back to there. I want it good and hot. And then we'll do compression check and a leak down and just kind of see where it's at. So I would say it's been a great day.